So today I just wanted to show off my stereo spring reverb that I created and give you a little bit of insight into how it works. You got a speaker. In the middle, you've got the cone. That has a bolt attached to it. And all of this part of the cone is filled with hot glue. So this bolt is not going anywhere. Attached to the bolt, there are some L brackets. And then these have yet another bolt. And that's where the springs go. On this side, we've got the pickups. So in between these go the springs. So speaker cone outputs our audio that we're feeding in. Um, instead of moving the cone to move air, it now moves this bolt, which then moves this apparatus, which then moves the springs. And then on this side, these piezo elements or contact mics pick up the signal and you get a stereo spring signal. Well, the part we're missing here is the amplifier for the speaker. You'll need some way to amplify the signal going into it. I used a little AliExpress amplifier module, um, maybe a buck or two. So the next thing we need is some way to hold this whole thing. I've experimented with just hanging this part from the ceiling, which I kind of want to try again. I just don't have any hooks in my ceiling right now that, that are strong enough for the weight. So my other option, which I've been using, is using a Harbor Freight clamp, just a, a regular old wood clamp that has taller jaws. Now the thing with mounting spring reverbs that I found and from looking at actual spring reverb tank designs is that you want to isolate this whole thing from what it's mounted in, usually with springs. Um, I'm not really sure how much it matters for the speaker side. It totally could, but I just use a piece of string and it seems to work just fine. For the piezo side, I did use springs. Um, so basically just mounting more springs to the plate holding the piezos and mounting those to the other side of the clamp. And the last part, which is optional, but does make a big difference, is using a contact mic preamplifier. A contact mic preamplifier, I, I'm sure you can buy a commercial one. Um, I have not. I ended up just creating a custom stereo amplifier PCB uh, based on a design I found online. And you can see more about that in the linked build article in the description below. The preamp really helps a lot with the bass tone. So without the preamp, it can sound a little bit tinny, which maybe is what you want, but it's really nice to have the full spectrum um, with the preamp. And of course it makes it much louder. So these are going to a preamp. So going through the whole setup, you feed the audio in to the amplifier, which is powered from an external power supply. The amplifier sends the amplified signal to the modified speaker cone, which in turn, instead of vibrating air like a normal speaker, since it's got this bolt hot glued in, it vibrates that instead, which in turn vibrates the springs. The signal travels all the way down the springs to this plate, which is isolated from the clamp via some smaller springs. And on this plate, there are two contact mics to pick up the stereo spring reverb signal. These go to a preamp, which is optional. You could just go straight into you know, your field recorder, your audio interface or whatever. But in my case, it goes to a preamp to get better bass response. And then it goes to the output. And since these are all using bolts, the springs can be changed on the fly to experiment with different sounds. Also, because we're using a Harbor Freight woodworking clamp, you can just move the jaws of the clamp as well. So you can adjust the tension of the springs by just opening up the clamp or closing up the clamp. And before I pick up my actual device to show you, I wanted to note that I did add something extra to the speaker side that I don't know if 
is necessary or not, but just because the whole thing is so big, there's a lot of pressure being put on the speaker cone that felt like it was gonna rip out the cone. So I added some additional support springs that just go to the edge of the speaker, like the, the metal housing, just to try to make sure that there's not too much pressure pulling this way. That is the spring reverb. So to take a closer look at the setup here, here is the modified speaker cone. You can see the hot glue chunk in there, and the supporting springs. You can see that this is kind of yanking the cone, which is why these support springs are here. Here is the L bracket that attaches the speaker cone bolt to the springs, which then go all the way down here to this piezo bracket. And if we look on the back side of this, you can see the two piezo discs super glued to the back of that plate. For further isolation, I printed a mold and filled it with concrete just because it's heavy. That's what's holding the clamp. So for fine tuning, you can crank this part of the clamp and you've got about eh, two inches of space. But for less fine tuning, you can just yank this thing back. All right, and that's all there is to it. So go make your own.